the British 14th Army in Burma jumped the gun on the monsoon season. The respite the Japanese armies had expected was not granted. Under constant air and ground pressure, the enemy was thrown back from Impal and Kohima. The enemy has been taught some new tricks in jungle fighting by the 14th. Ammunition dumps were left behind as the Nipponese fell back. The rising sun has begun to set throughout the Far East. Supreme Commander Mountbatten inspects his units in the Manipur sector. Battered enemy tanks dot this territory, just rested from the Japanese. Hurricane fighter bombers sweep in to attack a jungle village. These versatile craft have not only helped remove the Jap to India, they are now hastening the liberation of Burma and the entire East Asia sector. French history was being written on the shores of Great Britain. The second armored division of the fighting French was ready at long last to return to the soil of France. During four years of waiting, they had gained experience on many battlefields, but their eyes were always fixed on that glorious day when they would meet their mortal Nazi enemy in France itself. The cross of Lorraine was being borne high across the Channel waters. French nurses were included in the expeditionary force. Fully equipped with American battle dress and America's most modern machines of war, these Frenchmen were embarked on a crusade. Their tank landing craft followed the path of the earlier Allied armies, nosing their way onto historic D-Day beaches. The hearts of these soldiers and of their commander, General Leclerc, were bursting with fighting spirit as they strode ashore. And the families of these fighters, so recently liberated, were unrestrained in the deep fervor of their welcome. They had waited so long for the rebirth of the proud army of France, and now they cheered that army as it marched in for the liberation of France. Another chapter in the master plan of Tehran has become a reality. Thousands upon thousands of Allied troops hit the southern coast of France and have moved northward virtually unopposed. Young General Patch of Guadalcanal fame was the man who delivered this uppercut to Hitler's fortress of Europe. The landings were completely successful. The Nazis who manned the defenses took headlong flight. Lacking adequate transport, however, they were quickly overtaken by the Allies. Glider-borne forces who crossed the Riviera to land behind the enemy did not even draw fire. Nazi coastal batteries were fully occupied by the Allied navies. A lone Nazi plane that appeared met a precipitate end. When the Navy big guns had done their work, landing craft moved in under a screen of smoke. The Nazis' vaunted southern wall proved to be a thin defensive crust. It soon crumbled. Less than two hours after the landings, the first disconsolate prisoners made their appearance. Nazi demoralization here is no less complete than in northern France. The final nails are being driven into the coffin of the battered German 7th Army. British, Canadian and Polish forces, along with General Patton's slashing American tank columns, have scored a decisive victory in northwest France. The Battle of France may well become the Battle of Western Europe.
Great Falaise Trap has produced more than 30,000 prisoners alone. At least 300,000 Nazis have been written off since the Allied landings in France. In Brittany, American air attacks played a furious part in the siege of Saint-Malo. The fanatical German commander, who swore never to surrender, had a change of heart when the bombers had finished their mission. American transport columns, meanwhile, were rolling north from captured Le Mans. They liberated some 200 Russian women, taken slaves by the Nazis at Leningrad. For the past three years, these women have worked on German military roads in France. On these same roads, the United States 8th Air Force is avenging the slavery of these Russian women with telling effect. General Eisenhower's great blueprint for victory has become clear. Having bypassed Paris and crossed the Seine, both north and south of the French capital, the Allied armies have but one objective, the utter destruction of the Wehrmacht. French villages have suffered, but far more important is the mortal destruction of Germany's elite concert division. From Pelez to the Seine, German armor has been reduced to scrap metal. Churches can be repaired, but the Nazi tyranny and the spirit behind it is being forever destroyed. In this great and perhaps final battle, Polish forces have won high praise. Here, the Polish commanders are greeted by their chief, General Montgomery. No small part of Allied strategy rests in the hands of Allied pilots who are crippling the enemy's retreat north of the Seine. Victory in Northwest France, in General Montgomery's words, is definite, complete, and decisive. Nowhere can the enemy make a determined stand. Nowhere can he make a successful retreat. The end of the war, said Monty, is in sight. Let's finish off this business in record time.